Come one, come all to episode two of Cosmere Talk. I appreciate you, Zach, for giving me the idea for this uh, intro. Come one and come all works a lot better. Although it makes me think of that like opening song, or not opening, that song from uh, Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory, where it's like, come and see, and you'll be, I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Anyway, that was a strange tangent. We're going to go ahead and jump on into it. So, I <clears throat> have been doing a little bit more background research and refreshment on Cosmere Talk. I want to get my knowledge back up to where it needs to be. Obviously, it's going to take some time for me to be as familiar with Cosmere as I am with, like, Wheel of Time, or maybe even Witcher, just because it's so big, and there's so many stories that are interconnecting. So I've been doing a lot of refreshing, and I'll be starting Secret Histories very soon, just so I can uh, <clears throat> be, like, totally informed on what I need to be, and then I'll jump into White Sands. And after that, we have the new Cosmere novel coming out, which I'm excited about and we'll be talking about in episode 3. At least I believe that's connected to Cosmere, the one that's about to come out. I'm not sure. Anyway, what I asked you for this episode, or what are your thoughts of Vin's evolution as a character? Do you, love, do you like it? Love it? Hate it? Why? Get into it. Now, the reason I asked this is because I do thoroughly believe that Vin is one of the most interesting characters in all of Cosmere. Um, I think she's one of the best developed characters in all of Cosmere, and I wanted to uh, go ahead and get right into it. Now, one of the top responses, though, someone referred to me as Danny. My name is Daniel. <laughs> Danny is not me. I want to make that very clear. I do not like being called Danny. I know this is the internet, and people are likely to call me Danny now as a joke. I'm hoping we as a group can move past that. Anyway... From, uh, we had a few just kind of non-responses, but then we had a first real response from Jake Lafrance. I like everything about Vin's evolution as a character except her romance slash relationship with Venture. Most of it was very cringeworthy for me. Overall, great character development. So that was actually a familiar, like a consistent line of, um, criticism. A lot of people really did not like her romance. It was pretty much everybody's biggest um, criticism, whether it was with Ellen or with Venture. So then we had a name I am going to have a typical struggle with here, Nahulindamable526. That's the best I can do there. For me, the Vin slash Ellen relationship is about is not about romance, at least not from Vin's point of view. I think the, that relationship is Vin's desperate attempt to get a new family that gives her the love and emotional support that she never had due to her tragic past. I clarify that I do not try to make you change your opinion, but to explain the situation from another perspective. Um, I kind of disagree just on I never got that vibe, but I think that's a pretty opinion-based perspective, so I can't really tell you you're wrong, just that I never really got the vibe. I think she really did just love Ellen, and it wasn't about filling up anything for her past, but that's just because I, I just never got that uh, aspect. Now we have another one from Matthew Stormblessed. Matthew, I know you're listening. How's your day going? What's new in your life? And I always know you're listening to these because Stormblessed is in your username. <laughs> I was never that impressed with Vin's evolution as a character. Wow! Coming in with a hot take. I mean, I think it was great, but on my first read-through, I didn't think it hit me as hard as Kaladin. I do think it was well-written. I can kind of relate to being somewhat someone who doesn't engage with other people often. And to see Vin move mostly past this and become, excuse me, become a bad ass was very nice. Overall, I would give it a 7 out of 10, Kaladin being a 10. Interesting. Interesting. See, I think Vin's evolutions had way more depth and nuance to it than Kaladin so far. Um, she's also had more time devoted to her development so far. I don't know. I guess it's just preference-based. Um, I can't, once again, this is, this is all you know, based on opinion. You can't, you can't tell someone they're wrong for liking a character better. Um, we had people agreeing that Kaladin's evolution is much better than Vince. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to come in with a hot take here and I'm purposely trying to stir up controversy. I'm purposely just trying to get people boiled up. Um, I don't actually necessarily believe this, but I'm just going to put it out there. Vin does not get as much love from the fans because she's a woman. I'm just going to throw that out there and see what happens. Because uh, I think Kaladin, straight up, he's a dude who goes through a more typical warrior arc, which a lot more people find engaging. 
Vin is a woman who goes through a much more deep, nuanced, accurate representation of mental illness, which has way more, like, small significances and thought put into it in terms of a realistic portrayal of how a person can go through these things. Um, and I, I think it's kind of... This is just me trying to play devil's advocate to an extreme point here. Um, and I think people are just trying to... Uh, just finding more, more to relate with uh, Kaladin because he's a macho guy and they want to project themselves onto that. Now fight me. <laughs> um, and we had a bunch of back and forth between that point on Kaladin. And uh, then we had um, Ryan Ratchford coming in. Ryan, I love your comments, man. Always so good. The fact that you're pointing a gun at me in your profile picture. Slightly nervous, but, you know, I'll get over it. Um, spoilers for Miss Bornwell of Ascension. Ah, oh, I forgot to mention the fact. This episode of Cause Talk and all future episodes of Cause Talk will be completely spoiler-filled. Um, and the reason is I, uh, it's just, it's so complicated with all the different stories and people never put, except for a few, like Ryan Ratchford, which spoilers the books are going to be for, so I can't really organize them all. So it's just going to be a mishmash of spoilers, and I'll try to give out, as I read the comments, what book it's going to be spoiling, but it's going to be tricky, guys, and that's what it's going to be. Anyway, getting into Ryan Ratchford's comments, I really like Vin's growth from scared urchin to confident deadly warrior slash leader. I found it to be a gradual, subtle development. My favorite character moments are with her personal obsession to defend Ellen in book two, and her blossoming relationship with Tinsoon from master servants into friends. However, my least favorite parts from the same book, the entire Zane subplot, and the love triangle with her considering running away with him. I felt it was a tang it was a triangle because she talked to Sazed about her uh, hesitations with Ellen and there being another guy on spoilers. Once Zane was killed, she decided to marry Ellen. I'm not a fan of the subplot as it felt kind of forced to me. I actually do agree with you on that right there. You, you hit something there that I had kind of been mulling over quite a bit. With that also comes the subplot of Vin going on a killing rampage and then her angst if being a murderer. I never felt like it fit with the context of the setting slash book or Vin's character at that point and personally felt more like Brandon wanted to address anti-violent themes in a war story, which I have no problem with, but in my opinion could have been handled better. Yeah, I mean, I have no strong opinions of what you're saying there either way. Um, but I just want to say that uh, thank you for contributing and I... Uh, I hope you live a long, happy life, and uh, I hear from you again. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing today, guys. And then from Michael Graham, it's good to see you back in the thread, man. He's coming in with, I think Vin's evolution is fun. It's sort of, com is it, sorry. It's sort of a combination of Pretty Woman and Azoth, Kylar, and Night Angel, which I know you hate. I don't hate Night Angel, man. I think it's fine. She becomes sort of socialite slash magic ninja sort of like batman with magic instead of technology i've never thought of it like that but yeah it's also interesting to me that a damaged god wants her to take its place it's obviously made that choice before she went through her whole development but preservation couldn't enter her because of her hem hemorrhagic spike in her ear i'm not sure if i understand that unless the remnants of preservation know the future somehow how did it know that Vin would make a good enough replacement? Do the gods in Cosmere see the future? Odium not, does not seem to. Yeah, I, I got no idea there. You're, you're going in deep enough that I don't even know. But I, uh, I agree with everything you're pretty much saying. Man, we got, a, we got a lot of conspiracy theories with Vin, guys. We got some, we got some hardcore conspiracy theories here. Well, Vin and the gods and all of that. Moving on. So now we have some kind of unrelated comments because uh, there always are. And I appreciate them because I like uh, I like having some um, feedback in general. Now, in the last cause talk, I mentioned the fact that some people were accusing Brandon Sanderson of being homophobic. And we, uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we got some responses, one of which I really wanted to go over. And this is from DeadyGuys001. Also to the homophobic section... I went to school with one of Brandon's alpha readers who is gay. He has never provided any evidence of any prejudice and has nothing but good things to say about Sanderson. Apparently, they had a pretty good friendship. Make of it what you will. Well, I don't know if this person's being 100% truthful because I don't know who they are, but 
you know what, I don't see anyone, any reason to doubt them, and I don't believe Brandon Sanderson's homophobic after everything I've seen, so I like the dude. If you all got problems with him for some reason, that's your issue. I'm going to continue to enjoy his books. Um, <clears throat> now we have uh, Morris' responses to that general idea that I found very interesting. This is from McKay Heaton. Being a practicing Mormon as well as an avid fan of your channel and fantasy, I was wondering when the question about Brandon Sanderson homophobia would come up. I really appreciate and am not at all surprised by your response. You've always shown a really well-measured and thoughtful approach that I've been impressed by. I hope more on both sides of these arguments sit down and find out that we have more in common, such as the love for great books, than we have for differences between us. As far as the approach to gay marriage, if you dig into Brandon Sanderson has written on his website and other places like Reddit, I think you'll find some of the better articulated ideas of those of us on, on the left side of the church umbrella, which is still super right wing to many, but there is what it comes down to, I guess. Anyway, thanks again for your thoughts. Dude, I appreciate this comment on such a deep level. People who can disagree and still respect each other that's, man, that's how we fix all the stuff that's going wrong with our country right now. Just being able to say, hey, I disagree, here's why, be respectful, and that's how you, uh, that's how you change someone's mind, man. I don't know. Um, so now we have, uh, some just kind of, we have a little bit of, a um, name of the wind talk going on. Not entirely sure why. I, uh, didn't ask any questions about that, but, okay. Um... A bunch of people ask me to read Secret History and just stuff like that. Um, no, I'm not going to do Comment Clapback Volume 3, although I've had a few people ask me to do that. I love you guys, but I feel like if I do that too often, there's going to be people who are just leaving comments to have that happen. You know what I mean? And I don't want to get into that. Anyway, that's pretty much all the comments that were on topic here, and I'm extraordinarily tired. This is going to be a bit of a short episode. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I have a question here for next week's episode. If you were going to be able to be dropped into anywhere in Cosmere, the largest fantasy universe so far put to paper in terms of multiple worlds and all that, which, one would you, which world would you want to be dropped into and why? I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below, and uh, please justify your answer. I'd love to know why where you want to go is better the more everyone else wants to go. Anyway, y'all have a good one. Like and subscribe if you have not already. And hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Peace.